Hello, my name is Adam Smith, and my background is in the development and analysis of patient reported outcome and experience measures. I work in the outcomes research team for York Health Economics Consortium. This is the third in a series of webinars where I will be discussing the implementation of PROMS. In this webinar, I cover how to get the most out of PROMS. This is therefore of most relevance if you are thinking of introducing PROMS into practice or have introduced PROMS but want to increase their uptake or make better use of the data being collected. In the first webinar, I covered what PROMS are and the important things to consider when selecting a PROM. In the second webinar, I covered the two main issues of PROMS in healthcare. These are during doctor-patient consultations, for example, to encourage patient or service user involvement and enhance the quality of the interaction, and for healthcare reconfiguration purposes, for example, quality improvement and benchmarking. Touching upon what was covered in the first webinar, you can't get the most out of PROMs if you have not picked a suitable PROM for your population of patients or service users and the purpose underpinning the introduction of the PROM. To make sure your data is useful, you need to make sure your PROM is measuring what it claims to measure, i.e. it is valid, and measures this consistently, i.e. it is reliable. If the measure also lacks sensitivity to change, it will be too blunt a measure to guide you and your patient or service users as to whether they're making progress. Or it will fail to discriminate between teams that are doing well, where there may be positive case studies and lessons to share, and those that are doing less well, where more support may be beneficial. Health professionals may also undervalue the data, and patients or service users may fail to complete the problem if it is not capturing the things that are most important to them. Remember to consider and check. Is a generic or condition-specific PROM most informative in your setting? Were patients or service users involved in its development? Is the tool reliable and valid? Does it have sensitivity to detect change for either measuring individual patient progress, for use during consultations, for example, or a population of patients' progress, for instance, for benchmarking or quality improvement? A quick check on the internet can often identify papers and resources to help you answer these questions. It is helpful to involve staff and patients and service users when you choose your PROM. If they feel the tool is relevant and useful, this will make it easier to introduce into routine clinical practice. If you have already introduced a PROM into practice and uptake is low, a more focused implementation strategy may be required. Implementation of PROMs typically requires health professionals to administer them in routine clinical practice and refer to the results during routine clinical practice. Doing one without two runs the danger of a tick box culture developing, losing the potential benefits of PROMs. Even if you have picked the most suitable PROM for your setting and engaged with staff and patients or service users, there still may be challenges, including concerns that they have been introduced for performance management purposes, to check up on staff rather than to improve quality of care, the added workload of administering PROMs, data entry if not electronic, and time during consultation to refer to the results, complexity of accessing and interpreting the data on systems, and an ease due to the perceived new way of working or a perception that the data is not very useful. Any communication and training needs to address these issues rather than just providing information about the policy context. It is beneficial to provide information about how the tool was developed, how robust the data are and why they are being introduced whilst ensuring that the administration and feedback of the problems data is as simple as possible, for example, through use of electronic patient reported outcome measures. You need to be able to demonstrate the relative advantage of the PROM over current ways of working, how the PROM complements current ways of working, or how the use of the PROM has been made as simple as possible. Feedback of PROMs data is also important for both service users and health professionals. Without feedback, or if the feedback is too complex, the incentive to complete and refer to the PROM during routine practice is removed. The data will go off into the black box. If PROMs are being introduced to refer to during consultations, the feedback needs to be easy to access and to understand. If PROMs are being introduced for benchmarking and quality improvement purposes, the summary data provided need to be rigorous so that the results are taken on board by health professionals. 
Comparisons across different teams or services need to be fair, i.e. the PROM is equally applicable to all areas of care, data are based on a sufficient number of completed PROMs, confounding variables have been taken into account, i.e. poorlier patients may be associated with slower progress, for example, and failing to factor this into analyses reduces credibility and fairness of comparisons made. In this webinar we have covered how to get the most out of PROMs with a focus on how to introduce PROMs into routine clinical practice. The key points to remember are to ensure that the PROM selected is valid, reliable and sensitive to detect change, otherwise clinicians may undervalue the data obtained. The importance of involving clinicians and service users in PROM selection. The importance of providing easy to understand feedback of PROM scores. That using a PROM in routine practice may be a new thing for clinicians with various barriers slowing down their uptake. Identifying these barriers and tackling them in a systematic way can help integrate PROMs into routine practice. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to find out more about our services, please email us on the addresses shown below.